So I've got another video where I test drive this off-roading four-wheel drive canter light truck. But in this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the detail as to what makes the canter a capable four-wheel drive once it's been modified, and also compare and contrast it a bit to the specifications of the Ranger. All right, Carl, so the first thing you notice is that the tires on this are much larger diameter. So talk to us about what's the difference between those tires and these. Yeah, so essentially, because we are a bigger truck, we want a little bit more ground clearance from factory. So we have gone for what they call a super single. Yeah. Right, so this is a 37 inch tire. It's obviously very wide as well. So we've got a good ratio there. We're still gonna get decent amount of clearance, even though our differentials are bigger, the housing itself is bigger. So we're not gonna get the huge amount of clearance you may be expecting. Yeah. But essentially we're gonna get a little bit further off the ground and a little bit more clearance is what we want. Um, other things with this, because it is more a traditional four-wheel drive, we've actually still got manually locking hubs. So you don't see that very often anymore, but most of our four control vehicles still come with manually locking hubs. Okay, so these are about 31.5 inch diameter, those are 37, so they're much taller. That means that the tire can roll over obstacles a, a lot easier. Um, but again, because of that large diff, you don't, you don't, you, it's probably got more ground clearance than this, but not as much as you'd expect because of the extra diameter. Now they're also pretty heavy, aren't they? Yeah, they are obviously very heavy. Um, with the rim and the tire, you're looking close to 80 to 90 kilos. So that then does become quite difficult if you need to change a tire. Yeah, because I mean, I can change one of these by myself, but you know, I'm reasonably uh, I'm, I'm fit. And I know some people struggle even with these. I wouldn't want to try and manhandle 90 kilograms worth of tire around. That would be a bit much for me. Yeah. Well, it is very interesting. And we do have to obviously implement a certain process to do that. And if we can have assistance to do so. Now standard uh, canter has dual wheels at the back, which mean that you're actually gonna have two sets of tire marks as opposed to just one. And obviously that creates extra drag in ruts and, and soft conditions, so that's not ideal. That's why you convert them to super singles, which have the same track front and rear. So you get just one set of ruts. And also you can get debris lodged between the two tires at the back. Modern four-wheel drives like the Ranger have electronic traction control or brake traction control. I've got another video explaining that. But vehicles like these are a lot less sophisticated. So what have we got in the way of traction aids here, Carl? Essentially, not a great deal. What we have in the rear differential at the moment is what they call a zero-turn LSD. So that's going to lock up reasonably quickly and give us a reasonable amount of power to both wheels across the rear axle. But other than that, we're actually relying on the flex and the inherent capabilities of the vehicle itself. We don't really have any traction control systems that's automatically going to stop a wheel that's spinning. Okay, but there are front differential locks available and um, for vehicles like the Cantor and the Isuzu MPS. So there are options out there to um, put limited slip or potentially locking differentials in, so you're not completely out there. But what you do get is just a lot of flexibility, big tyres and quite good weight distribution. So if you look at my Isuzu versus this Ranger video, just see how amazingly capable these vehicles are despite their weight and size. But the back of the vehicle now, so Carl, what's going on at the back here? Yeah, so when we had this manufactured for us, we actually had a four and a half tonne tow bar fitted, and essentially at our GVM, so six tonne, we can actually tow still our three and a half, and if we're not quite at GVM, then we can actually tow all the way up to four and a half tonne. Uh, what we also had manufactured and integrated was actually a rear mounted winch. So it's an 18,000 pound winch just to support our recovery processes if we do end up getting quite bogged. Yeah, because when these vehicles get bogged, the GVM uh, gross vehicle mass is um, six tonnes on them. That's a lot of force to move. Now, if you want to go backwards, that can be a problem. Maybe another vehicle can't pull you out. So if you've got a winch on here, you're able to do it. And that's handy for any four-wheel drive. But with a vehicle like this, GVM of six um, tonnes, uh, payload three, three and a half tonnes, the incremental, you, you're not giving up much weight. It's what, 40 kilograms on the back here. And it's just really handy. There's also a lot of space for it as well, which is great. And for that four and a half ton towing you can't do that with a 50 mil ball you're going to need a 70 mil um, ball or a pintle hitch to do it so it's a couple of things underneath here first of all look at the size of this differential it's massive it's really designed for heavy duty and that's what starts to limit your ground clearance here's the shock absorbers now you notice they're actually quite close to the differential for maximum ride and handling you actually want the shock absorbers out as far as you can but they're quite inboard here and um, that combined with these massive leaf springs and the 
lift there means that you're not going to get the ride and handling and it's also a live axle you're simply not going to get the ride and handling out of one of these things that you would out of a modern four-wheel drive and also bear in mind you're right over the front axle so if you're looking for maximum comfort this is not the vehicle for you that said lots of people do find it more than livable on a day-to-day -day basis we got the canter pretty much flexed up as you can see there's a couple of interesting points about it because it's not just the suspension which is helping keep all four wheels on the ground is it carl no so realistically what we've actually got is the suspension doing its thing we've actually got the kinetic tray mounts which are between the tray itself and the chassis rails flexing as well independently and also the body itself is going to flex independently to the, the tray and to the suspension so it's more traditional where everything flexes yeah so in cars you hear chassis manu or car manufacturers saying look we've got to get the chassis as stiff as absolutely possible but in trucks it's the opposite the chassis is actually designed to flex and it can look disconcerting like it's going to break but it's not going to break it's actually designed to flex in part of the suspension and that's why a vehicle like this can keep all four wheels nicely on the ground whereas you saw the, the ranger just just couldn't do that all right, so looking at off-road geometry, that's really important, and that's your ramp over angle, which is the sort of slight, well, slight, slight we can go over, and then the approach and departure angles as well, and that's really critical for any off-road vehicle, because if you run out of angles or clearance, you tend not to be going anywhere, no matter how good your traction systems are. So, Carl, um, we're a bit concerned. We just got sort of um, bolts hanging down there. There's no underbody protection. How had this vehicle sort of survived going into rough with, with um, sort of no protection, everything just hanging down? Yeah, so essentially because we've got our 37 inch tyres, we've got our decent suspension lift, uh, from you know, standard essentially, we've got really good approach, departure and ramp over angles. That's what we're relying on. Yep. At the moment, there is always the potential to strike either the fuel tank, the exhaust or the drivetrain underneath. Luckily, in our experience, we haven't actually come across that yet but you can get aftermarket products to protect those areas if you think it's going to be an issue. And the wheelbase, the distance from the centre of the rear axle to the centre of the front axle here, um, on the Ranger it's 3.2 metres, slightly long for a four-wheel drive. And what is it on this vehicle? Yeah, so at the moment we're sitting at 3.415. 3.4, so it's about 200 mil longer there. So it's not actually massively longer than the Ranger, but it's got much taller tyres and it sits higher, so that ramp angle is actually quite good. When you buy a light truck like the Canter, it comes as a cab chassis, so you need to put something on the back like this tray, which is 2.7 metres long, or it would be 3.1. There's two spare tyres there. If one tyre is mounted underneath, you could have a longer tray. Or for the single cab, you can also fit a motorhome like this one. Those springs are the kinetic subframe, which allows the chassis to flex relative to the body. Now this is the standard 100 litre diesel tank. You can add a total of three tanks in any combination of diesel and water. So for example, 200 litres of diesel and 100 litres of water is a pretty popular option. So at the front there's a ball bar designed for the canter. Those eyelets are to allow the cab to tilt forwards, they're not recovery points. This is a 25,000 pound winch, much more powerful than the average four-wheel drive winch. And if you look closely, you can just about make out the underbody protection. So this is a close-up of the suspension. It's got parabolic springs at front and rear, and there's the 50 mil lift to just raise it a little bit further and that's also the same on the right hand side as you can see. So let's take a quick look at the spec differences between the Canter and the Ranger and that starts with the length. The Canter's probably about half a meter longer than a standard Ranger but typically you wouldn't have a standard Ranger you have a ball bar on the front or a service body on the back so that difference would actually be almost nothing lengthwise. Uh, width it is a little bit wider so it is going to sc scratch a bit more down some of those narrow tracks but the big difference you're going to notice is actually the height it's another 600 mil taller so you, that's where the brush bar comes in and that chainsaw that I talked about in the other video but in practice it tends not to be as much of a problem as, as you may think. Uh, turning circles bigger as well so you're going to need to do more three-point turns and the base weight. Now with trucks the base weight is kind of a little bit difficult to sort of say what it is and isn't because 
you, 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 when you buy the, the truck, it's a cab chassis, you've got to put something on the back, be that a tray or a motorhome or whatever else. But the one you see is running about three and a half tons and my range is about 2.6, 2.7 tons ready to go. The GVM is six tons um, for the canter and 3.2 for the Ranger. So payload wise, you're looking at two and a half to three tons for the dual cab um, canter and probably, well, not even a ton for the Ranger. That makes a big difference. And ground clearance, uh, greater ground clearance for the canter, two 70 mil, only 220 mil for the range of Ford say it's more they're wrong, they're measuring it from the wrong place. So is the canter right for you? Well there's three reasons you really want to look at one. One is payload, so you get way more payload, um, two and a half, uh, three tons, considerably more. You get a lot more space as well, that tray is in excess of three meters long versus the service body on the canter, it's only, sorry, range it's only 1.8. And seating, you can put six or seven people in the canter, whereas in the range you maximum of five, obviously you could take a wagon but then you've got really very little space in the back. Now size wise the Ranger does win, it's a lot shorter, um, it's, it's not, not as tall, um, it's a little bit shorter and it is narrower. Um, it is more comfortable and uh, then the um, so, a canter even with its parabolic springs and certainly the range is not even as comfortable as a wagon it's not going to be as luxurious as safe either. Um, on roads it's just going to drive a lot uh, nicer and quicker the, the Ranger will. The canter, well you're not going to be maintaining 110 k's an hour up a steep uphill and there's no real automatic version unless you pay a lot of money either. And car license, I put an asterisk on that, you can derate these to four and a half tons so you can drive them on a car license but if you're going to use that full six ton GVM you'll need at least a light truck um, license or light rigid license so car license obviously okay for the Ranger. Anyway that's a quick run through of the pros and cons hope you found this video useful any questions please drop them in the comments and thanks for watching